Hi everyone. Uh, this section and the next section are going to focus really heavily on uh, tying together everything we've talked about with derivatives and second derivatives and graphs. Uh, with the goal being that we can get a really good idea of what graphs look like without ever having to touch any technology. That basically derivatives tell us everything we need to know. So uh, in this section we're going to focus on all the details and then in the next section we're going to take a kind of a step back and really focus on just what if really what I want to know about is what is the very biggest and very smallest y value. So part of this we'll be looking at local maxes and mins which we've talked about before um, and that will be in this section and then like I said the next section we actually take a step back and say what if I'm not interested in a local max or min but the global max or min and actually a lot of times that's an easier question to answer but it makes more sense to talk about this first anyway so we're gonna do the little bit harder stuff first uh, okay, so first thing I have just a reminder for you, if uh, f of p is greater than or equal to f of x for all x near p, so this is saying the y value when x equals p is bigger than, at least as big as all the other y values nearby. Uh, what we would say is that f of x has a, uh, oh, a local maximum at x equals p. And if f of p is less than or equal to f of x for all x near p, so this is saying the y value when x equals p is at least as small as all the other y values, then f of x has a local min at p. Okay, and then I have what I think is a fairly quick preview activity, so just this number one through parts F here. So if you want to pause and just work through this to make sure you're remembering this vocab and remembering how to look at these graphs and answer questions, and then check back in, and I'll give you some definitions at the bottom. Okay, so we are supposed to first, looking at this graph, this is h of x, identify all values of x for which h has a local maximum. So a local maximum has y values bigger than everything nearby. I am seeing that right here. If you draw a little circle around that point, it is the biggest y value in that circle. And the same thing right here. So when x equals negative 2 and also when x equals 1, I see a local max. There's nowhere else that I could draw a circle. Uh, and pick out a uh, biggest or a uh, biggest y value, I guess is what we're looking for here, other than the y value right on the edge of the circle. Okay, so identify all values of x for which h has a local minimum. So we want to be able to draw a circle around the point so that nothing is smaller, and I'm seeing that right here. If I center a circle around that point, none of the y values in my circle are smaller than that one. So this is at x equals zero. Okay, and then we're supposed to look at this graph and identify when h prime of x equals zero. So derivative equals zero means the tangent line has slope zero, and I see that happening at one. And then, okay, so right here, I also see that happening at negative two and a half. It looks like there's a flat spot. Uh, people are tempted to say one and a half is that as well, but that's not zero slope, that's undefined because there's two different slopes depending which way you come in. So this would be a negative 2.5 and a positive one. Derivative does not exist, so we just pointed out 1.5. Uh, also negative two, there's a corner, so that would be does not exist. And at zero, there's a corner. So at x equals negative two, zero, and 1.5. Okay, so now we're supposed to look back at this and make some connections. True or false, every local max or min occurs at a point where h prime is either zero or does not exist. So negative two uh, was a max, and that was when the derivative did not exist. One was a max, and that was when the derivative was zero. Zero was a min, and that was it does not exist, so that appears to be true. Each of my max and mins happen at a point where the derivative is either zero or undefined, either a corner or a little flat spot like this. True or false, at every point where the derivative is zero or undefined, there is a local max or min. So that's false. Let's see, negative 2.5 is a good example. 1.5 is a good example. Uh, at negative 2.5, the derivative is zero, but there's no max or min. And at 1.5, the derivative does not exist, but there's no max or min. So that appears to be false. 
Okay, so if we're feeling okay about this, we're gonna jump into our next definition. There's a fair number of definitions in here, but some of them are familiar, so hopefully it won't feel like too much. Definitions and, um, oh, I don't know what, tests, I guess. Okay, so this one is defining what's called a critical number. So a critical number is an x value uh, in the domain of a function f at which the derivative is either zero or undefined. So this is exactly what we identified as important up here. All of our maxes and mins happen when our derivative was zero or undefined. So we're gonna name those points critical numbers, those x values. Uh, okay, so again, if your function is zero, if your derivative is zero or undefined, then that x coordinate is a critical value. So based on that, we wanna fill in the next couple with a must be, may or may not be, or must not be. So if you wanna pause really quick and see if you can figure this out. If f has a local max, a max or min at x equals c, then c uh, must, may, or must not be a critical value. Okay, so we decided the maxes and mins in our picture always happened at critical values, so I'm gonna say this is a must be, and it is. I'm not just gonna say it. Uh, must, I guess the b's already there. If x equals c is a critical number, so the derivative is zero undefined, then there must, may, or must not be a local max or min at x equals c. Okay, so we had critical values that did not end up being maxes or mins, but we also had critical values that did, so this is a may or may not. Okay, and this is really, really important. Um, people want to take this both directions. This might seem silly, but it's really important to be clear on the fact that if you have a critical value, uh, there may or may not be a uh, max or min, but if you have a max or min, it absolutely is at a critical value. So your critical values are the short list of places that you might find a local max or min. So if you're looking for a local max or min, check all your critical values. That's what's important here. Okay, thanks for watching.